To be fair, to to the Japanese, I'm probably more like a kaiju than a person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> not not only is Chinoda kind of big, he's also big, tall. Chinoda, the type of guy that shows up and they freaking get inspired to make a new Baki character. Yeah, like for real. For real. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and tonight I have our czar of source material, John. We have spent the last hour being racist. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Two of us have spent the last hour being racist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also have our ravenous cherry monger, Chinoda. To explain that nickname, cherries are in season, and every time I go to Costco, I've just been buying a whole thing of cherries and just demolishing them. You know what's really sad? I love the taste of, like, actual cherries. Mm -hmm. I cannot process cherries in my body. Oh, so, you get the You get the trots? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, not um. Artificial cherry is like the worst tasting thing to me. So it's like I have no good middle ground. Ooh. <laughs> I can't have actual cherries. Otherwise, I'll just get like, I'll be in the toilet all day. I gotta so, ask, what the hell are artificial cherries? Like artificial cherry flavor. I think it does not oh. taste nothing like actual Like cherry. fake cherry flavoring that they have like in sodas and stuff. Yeah, I, oh. like I hate cherry flavored things, but I love actual cherries. But I can't have them. <laughs> if I have too What's much, like my tummy hurts. <laughs> It's like it's like for me like I love grapes. I hate mm. grape flavored things. Like grape soda is disgusting. It tastes See, nothing like you, Oh, excuse you, sir. That's purple flavor. Pur purple I drink. have you insult that. Purple I'm fine drink. with artificial grape flavor stuff. Just like how I love artificial strawberry. I hate the taste of actual strawberries. <laughs> Which is weird because I love the taste of strawberries, but I hate the texture. This is becoming the food cast here on Anime Club. After I know. <laughs> anime well, I'll mukbang, think about dragon fruit, though. I personally think that the essence of dragon fruit tastes really good because of the sugar. Actual hmm. dragon fruit doesn't taste nearly as good because it's not nearly as sweet. But I still think it tastes good. But it's in its own way, you know. Hmm. You know, dragon fruit has let me down just because it doesn't live up to the name. I'm like, I'm thinking such a cool fucking epic fruit, and it's like, no, you're just like, bro. Freaking, I don't I'm know like, if you have you seen you, dragon fruit dragon looks fruit. pretty freaking like metal. No, it bro. looks like... cool. It looks metal as fuck. The taste is what disappoints me. I mean, it's kind of like guava. Like if you've had, if you've had guava flavored things, you know it's like super sweet, super nectary. Bro, I fucking love guava. Yeah, but then you look at the actual fruit, and it does not look appetizing whatsoever. <laughs> but then you eat it, and you're like, oh, my God, what the? Like, guava the flavor tastes exactly like guava the fruit. You could say the same thing about kiwis. Like, you look at a kiwi, it's like, this looks like a hairy testicle. But it tastes really good. Depends. <laughs> depends on the kiwi. And also, yeah, it has to be really right. Depends. Like, yeah, there's golden kiwis, which aren't as tart. And then there's, like, regular kiwis, the ones that have the hairs that are uh, pretty tart, which are pretty good, too. They're also I think super the high in potassium. Tartness is what makes it good. That's what I enjoy about kiwis. Yeah, that's what I like about kiwi flavoring. But it has to be a balance of sweet and tart. Like I love fruit. Like I remember um, when we moved to uh, America and up to Washington specifically, there was no way to get fresh like uh, fruit, like Southeast Asian fruits. Uh -huh. So we'd travel three hours north to Canada, <laughs> where they have. Laxer laws regarding importing fresh fruit from Asia, Southeast oh. Asia, just so we could eat the best flavored, like, Southeast Asian fruits. <laughs> because there's, like, uh, ecology problems, right? Like, they can't, because it, Canada is more far north, so they are less likely to have these fruits bear trees when they throw the seeds, like, away in the dumps. Yeah. Um, they, like, these tropical fruits cannot grow there. Uh, and Washington, for a very long time, they had the exact same type of rule like hey we don't want what happened in uh, hawaii to happen here so no jackfruit no logan unless it's been frozen for like two weeks or something Wait, and then I'll it can come over it. what happened in hawaii uh very invasive plant species and animal species took over various islands like there's oh. one island that's just completely covered in japanese ivy because someone 
has like a condo there or had a condo there and brought a Japanese ivy plant and then it kind of just went everywhere and killed all the trees. Holy shit, what? Yes. That's a problem. insane. Yeah, invasive species are a problem in most states. Like I believe over in uh in Florida, you have an invasive lionfish like problem and you can just straight up just kill lionfish. No license you required. Do. You see them, you just fuck them up. Anyway, so while we're here tonight, <laughs> Oh my god, we're here to talk about anime. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was a food camp. I, getting, getting, oh, yeah, I know. Getting, getting, getting back on, on topic. Um, it is The summer season of uh, 2024 is almost upon us, so uh, we are going to do our summer preview. Are you guys ready to dive into this? Because let me tell you something. I've looked at this list. There's some shit. I mean... <laughs> uh, I, you know, okay. honestly, I looked at the list and I was like, wow, there are a lot of... Sh- there are like over 10 shows that are going to air where I'm like, I have read this. And I'm like, man, every season, there's more and more shows that I've watched or read that are getting adapted, which is pretty cool. But at the same time, I'm like, is that really just a problem of me, though, just like reading too much manga and light novels? <laughs> the answer is yes, John. That's exactly yeah, the problem. It, it used to be that I was, I'd was i only watch three anime a season. Now it's like, well, I'm watching at least 10 plus. Like, There's no stopping me now. <laughs> Don't stop me now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's actually I'm talk. Having a good time. Good time. Having, having a good, good time. time. Up right. There we go. Uh, so yeah, let's actually talk about the uh, upcoming summer anime season and what we're going to watch or shit on. So, um, as traditional, I will. Uh, I will go first. Boys, we got peak anime coming back. Oshinoko oh. season two. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Now, I don't John, think this. You, you read this, don't you? Yes, I read Oshinoko. Um, mm. I am up to date on that. I do not believe this arc is that exciting, to be honest. Mm. How does it? Well, I mean, like, how did, would it compare to like the first season? Then, in your mind, I think the stuff that people uh, wanted from Oshinoko from the first episode, mm. uh, they're definitely not going to see more of that in season two. Um, okay. Specifically, this arc. There are some tidbits. There are things working in the background. Um, but overall, I'd say this is a very boring, uh, bridging arc. Okay. So does it kind of put the, the mystery element on the back burner for a while? Yes. Okay. Cause that's one of the things that really kept me hooked a lot in the first season, which is a shame if that's the direction they're going. Um, but are you, then I, I have to assume that in maybe the next season, it's going to pick back up. I have to assume that because oh, like, yeah. it's the hook of the, the whole story. Yeah, I, I'm i just saying this, specifically this arc where they do the movie or whatever it is, the live action the drama, theater stuff. dramatic play. The theater, theater yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like 2.5D anime is what it's like. So basically um, they're portraying an anime but in like Broadway form, like live action okay. form. Okay, but okay. they also have, like, anime backgrounds and stuff, like screens and stuff in the background where the people are, like, acting. It's, it's So it's a, like one of those 2.5D performances then. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Uh, I've never seen this type of stuff in person, but apparently it's mm. pretty big in Japan. Like, live action stuff is pretty big in Japan, like dramatic retellings and stuff in live action 3D. I mean, there's a lot of uh, anime that get stage play adaptations too. Stage play. Oh, that's that's the word I was looking for. It's a state. Yeah, it's a 2.5D like stage anime stage play. Okay. Arc. Um, All right. I mean, I'm I'm gonna watch it. I, oh, <laughs> I yeah. read it, so like, who yeah. cares? <laughs> I mean, I I've seen so many memes for stuff that's going on in the in the, the yeah, story, in the, like in the current story. Yeah. I, I don't know how much of this is <laughs> true, but I'm like a, a man can hope. <laughs> I'm pretty I was, sure most of it's a joke. I remember I was talking to my uh, younger brother about um, Oshinoko, and he was like, "Dude, where the fuck did the manga go?" And I'm like, "I don't know, but I'm I'm loving it." <laughs> He's like, this is, "I hate it." I'm like, "Well, <laughs> tough nuts, <laughs> tough." I mean, I don't really have much more to say about this, except I definitely will be watching. I'm super hyped for it personally, just because of how much I love the first season. Um, I just don't feel like it would top um, Yosobi's Idol. Like that song. Oh, the OP, you mean? Yeah. I don't think season two can top anything from season one. So if you didn't like season one, like certain people, Natai, 
uh, you probably <laughs> won't like season two. I mean, uh, you know, fair enough. Um, I mean, it's still the same studio that's making it. It's still I, looking at the um, the uh, the trailer that's been released so far. It still looks like it's going to look good on from an animation perspective. Um, so. I don't know, I'm still looking forward to it. I think a lot of people... It, it is the most anticipated thing this season, so... Uh, I think for, for good reason. Just how much of a... a um, how much of an impact season one left, I think? It was a phenomenon. Yeah. I know that much. there are a lot of people in the anime community uh, that were like, Oshinoko fell off. Just because that first episode goes, yo, what the fuck? And it just never revisits <laughs> it. So I, I can kind of understand their feelings about that because to me the most interesting about Oshinoko was the, like the beginning part, mm-hmm. um, and in the manga they are continuing and wrapping up towards the uh, the end of that, which is good. But it just feels like the middle parts are very middling to say the least. But uh, you know, in typical Aka Akasaka fashion, that's like to put backgrounds for their characters because it's not just like sure you have the twins but there's other characters that are revolving around the twins so the fact that it's a gotcha. world not just uh yeah yeah which is cool all right well uh i guess we can move on to uh what john wants to talk about first so uh take it away john <laughs> all right um fuck, what's the english title of this i'm not trying to i'm not going to journey to through another world raising kids while adventuring raising kids while adventuring diabetes uh, Dude, I've only read the manga for this because it, it's kind of isekai trash in the fact that there are OPMCs in here, okay? Uh, but it's not the main character, main character, who's OP. It's actually the twins that he has to take care of. Now, hmm. so the story goes uh, in Raising Kids While Adventuring, uh, God accidentally kills the main character. And it's like, whoops, my bad, bro. Uh, to make up for it, I'll reincarnate you into this other world. But also, hey, I have this thing I need you to do. <laughs> There's these kids, right? I need you to help raise these kids. And then he's like, whose kids are these? And he's like, are you a deadbeat god? He's like, no, it's not me. It's a different <laughs> god's kid. <laughs> so he's like, I mean, I guess, I suppose I can take care of these kids. Uh, Alan and Eileen, I believe. Elena. Alan and Elena. Um, in the manga, it's drawn so cute. Oh my god, dude. Straight diabetes, right? Like, just mm. insulin shot, bro. Uh, I watched the preview, the trailer for this, and I'm just like, it's not nearly as cute as the uh, manga is, but I mean, it's still gonna be a cute story. Uh, like I said, it's it's got OPMCs, but they're they're the kids, because they're the kids of a god. So they, they themselves are like demigods at the least. <laughs> Uh, and it's about a guy taking care of them in another world. It's it's relaxing. There's no fucking high stakes drama. No like actual bad things happen. It's just this dude who's taking care of these twin kids. That's it. That's the story. Uh, it's going to be done by EMT Squared, who have also done other very cutesy looking shows. Like I believe earlier this year they did um, Fluffy Paradise, Iskai Mofu Mofu. Oh, that um, shit was good. They're doing currently what's airing. Uh, Train to the end of the world. Is that what? Is that what? Oh that yeah, was? that's it right there. You said that's wacky, dude. It's so weird. It's such a weird show. I I keep watching. It, I'm like, this is such a weird show. Nothing makes sense, and I'm still gonna keep watching it. <laughs> like, <there's... laughs> I tell you, EMT Squared has like the cute character designs on lock. Yeah, they do very cutesy things like Kuma Kuma Punch. Uh, they've also done the East Kai Slow Life uh potion or apothecary mm-hmm. or whatever it was. Oh okay. Uh, they unfortunately did Assassin's Prime. Oh, that's that's uh, that's very unfortunate. I believe well, I'm seeing also, a lot of only... cute stuff from them, so they have it on lock. Oh yeah, dude, they did Nyanko oh, Days. Oh my Nyanko god, Nyanko Days, Days is so cute. It's such a cute show. Yeah, they they've got the 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 whole cutesy thing on lock. So I'm excited for this. I know other people are probably not going to be excited because you know, unlike traditional um. OPMC isekai trash type of shows. Mm. This isn't combat heavy. This is really a slow life show. This is a turn your brain off and just like enjoy the cute characters and the cute moments. And I'm all for that. It's like, it's not, it's kind of like an ESGK. Okay. Like, or it's supposed to heal you, but it's also like, it's got, it's got uh, the isekai tropes, you know? Hey, this might actually be an isekai I watched though. If it's got the cute shit in it. 
yeah, it's all just about a cute shit. Like, <laughs> no drama, no high stakes, no fighting the demon lord. Just going around adventuring with these kids. That is just like oh, hey, precious. These I, precious I might be babies. here. Honestly, good enough for me. Yeah. Well, that's not. That doesn't mean much coming from you, Chinoda. <laughs> Dang. Dang, it's bro. It's true, though. No, it's true. It's true. I know <laughs> it's true. We're isekai trash brothers, but still. <laughs> All right, uh, from one extreme to another, uh, Chinoda, take it away. All right, kids. <laughs> uh, Isekai Suicide Squad. You've, you've heard it. I'm sure everyone has, because when they announced this, everyone was like, the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean Suicide Squad's getting an Isekai? But yeah, I thought no, this was a bad it. joke. It's not a bad yeah, joke at all. <laughs> no, no, it's a real thing. It is actually And it's being happening. done by wit. Now, here's the cool thing. Yeah, with uh, people who made Spy Family uh, did uh, Attack on Titan. Lots of lots of great stuff and all that are doing uh, Suicide Squad. And I'm just like, it's a choice. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I, I've watched the trailers. It does actually look uh, pretty good, in my opinion. Um, Can I, just, I, I want to and... point out something. Fucking yeah. Peacemaker is being voiced by Dio. <laughs> I know, bro. I saw that. I saw that. I'm like, what do you mean? Just it caught me I so off guard. I wanted to put that out there. It's like, again, it's a choice. Uh, <laughs> they definitely have a pretty good uh, cast, though, for this anime. So I'm actually really excited. I'm a little bit worried about the director because, like, from what I see, this is his first time flat out directing a whole anime instead of just uh, a single episode. Uh, Eri uh, Osada. So I'm kind of worried about how it'll go, if he'll do fine and all that. He's worked on a bunch of different stuff. Uh, looks JJK, like mostly as, uh, as Jojo. I, well, looks like mostly as either a character designer or a key animator. Yes. You know what's going to be the worst done, thing? Uh, yeah. So, Studio Wit is doing a different anime this season as well. Yep. Mm. Which we will get to. Well, we'll get to it. Oh, did someone put it on their list? Yes. Yeah, I did, I think. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Alex put it on his list, not you. Wait, I know one of us have it on our list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alex has it on Either way, we'll list. get to it. <laughs> I mean... Okay, yeah, I, I didn't know if anyone was going to bring it up because I was just like, I didn't know it was going to be. I, was, I I saw the trailer for the stupid anime and I was like, yo, who the hell is doing this? And then I saw that uh, Wit Studio is doing it like today and I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> Which will make a lot more sense when we get to it. <laughs> but genuinely, watch the trailer. It does actually look good. So I'm actually looking forward to this. How it'll fully turn out, who knows? But I'm at least looking forward to seeing how it'll go. Can we when when this inevitably gets an English dub? If Joker isn't voiced by Mark Hamill, what's the point? He's not gonna do it because um. Then it's not gonna be out, good. He flat out said a while ago he's not gonna do it anymore since um. Kevin Conroy passed. Name? Yeah. Yeah, since Conroy passed. Mm -hmm. It's kind of end of then, an era, you, you know. Then you shouldn't you shouldn't do animated Joker anymore. Just saying. I think you need to get over it. These characters wow. will lo these characters will live on long past us because they're going to be milked to hell and back. Oh, that is for damn sure. You got that right. Um, yeah, um, I'm. I'm not really excited for East Sky Suicide Squad because I'm neither like, am I really. Mainly because I. How many times has DC tried to plug Suicide Squad? Right. How many movies do we have? How many freaking um, the video games, the adaptations, Plenty the freaking everything? They keep trying to plug the crap out of Suicide Squad, and I'm like, why? Now, the first Suicide will... Squad wasn't even that good. <laughs> Movie. Now, here is one thing I will say: almost every single um, DC animated prop uh, property that I've watched is actually really fucking good. Like, yeah, it's DC really animated like, stuff watch, is pretty good, yeah. You watch uh, Marvel animated stuff, it doesn't compare nowhere near. Like, DC animated just works really well. And that that includes uh, 
a lot of the Suicide Squad uh, stuff as well. It just works really well. I'm not sure why exactly, but it does. So I'm looking think... forward to seeing what this format, anime, does with it. I think something that's working in its favor um, is that it's not an adaptation of anything. They basically are just having fun with the characters. Yeah, they can do whatever stories they want whenever they want, which really works. I mean, I, to me, that may work in its favor because it's it's not having to live up to any source material. I mean, well, my other question about material. like Isekai Suicide Squad is like, okay, so without... Um, Amanda Waller being there, like, who's going to control the Suicide Squad in the Isekai world? I don't know. That's what I'm looking forward to finding out. Like, how are they... Like, why would they even stay together as a team if Waller isn't there to have a, a bomb on their necks? Yeah, like... like I, mm, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Um, I mean, I'll check it out, but I, I just... I'm so sick of freaking Suicide Squad, man. <laughs> Mm. Warner it Bros. just keeps trying yeah. to plug it, man. Like, just incessantly plugging Suicide Squad with its failure of a game that just recently launched. <laughs> Surprised they didn't cancel this. Like, they canceled Coyote vs. Agni. I would have rather watched that than kill the Justice Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> me I mean, too. the people who directed it, I would have much rather watched that because, like, holy shit, they're actually really good directors, too. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, hopefully... um, I mean, hopefully it's good. I, I, I don't want an anime to freaking fail, but I'm just, the IP is a little tiring, you know? I get it, yeah. It's like when I see another The Walking Dead property, I'm just like, ugh. This, end it. Just fucking end it. I just don't care, it dude. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I was wrong. Uh, it's not the same directors that did Acme. Um, it was someone else. Sorry. I just wanted something new. That's all I'm saying. Yes. That's fair. Completely absolutely fair. um but anyway speaking of things that we thought were over uh but never really truly end monogatari is coming back everyone <laughs> holy so, shit the dead lives i <laughs> yeah what is this is this based off of like any novel so yes um okay first off um yes monogatari is coming back um uh, after a bit of a hiatus i think like four and a half five years um is still being done by Shaft. Aki Kishimbo is coming back to, to direct the entire project. So this is going to be an adaptation of both the off-season and monster season light novels. Um, I guess Shaft is finally making good on the promise they made back in 2011, saying that they were going to animate the entirety of the Monogatari series once it got finished. Um, and yeah, so there are novels past the the end story um which kind of reminds me of marvel making stuff after endgame uh but <laughs> um, this is truly the phase four of anime <laughs> yes this is phase four of monogatari <laughs> this is 100 percent phase four of monogatari um but yes to answer your question this is based on additional monogatari novels that came after um what was supposed to be the final Monogatari novels. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't make a final season, final part three joke here, but I guess you I can mean, only do that to attack on Titan. Monogatari uh, final season off season part three, section five. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't um, know. I should probably watch Kizu Monogatari and finish Awari. <laughs> Cause I still have it. You really should. I'm, the Kizu movies behind. are great. I'm years behind. Listen, I'm not as invested as Monoga into Monogatari as you and Natai are, like, to be honest. Yes. You know what's funny is that it was a little over uh, a year ago, or a little less than a year ago now, that Natai and I thought we Shot had finished the final our episode of the, the Monogatari final, yeah. like yeah, review. Yeah, we, we, we thought we had done the final episode of our Monogatari spoiler cast, but when this does finally finish, Natai and I will do more, uh, because... We're nothing if not uh, completionists. Um, this also means we're going to have to redo our rankings because there's new stuff and new characters. Um, I'm personally oh, excited. Let's complain about con future possible content. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm excited about this personally because there are some really good stories in these novels. 
Um, there's some really good characters that are introduced too. Um, but I, this kind of came out of nowhere. I was, I like a lot of people, a lot of Monogatari fans genuinely thought that Shaft was just kind of done because Shaft has been really, really quiet ever since Monogatari ended. I mean, they've been doing stuff, but they haven't been doing stuff like this. I mean, they've still been working on the, um, uh, the Madoka Magica movie, the final one, but I don't know. I just kind of came out of nowhere. I'm personally excited for it. I know a lot of Monogatari fans are as well. Um, and they've got everyone back. I mean, they've got a lot of the same staff back that worked on the original Monogatari um, uh, anime back in the day. They've got all the same voice actors back. Um, one thing that they have announced is that they've announced that Yoasobi is doing a song in the in this season. They haven't said whether it's an OP or an ED, or even if it's just an insert song. Um, I don't care. I'm here for it. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, I know this there's point, a lot Yosobi of Yosobi can't miss. Like that's what I'm saying. A lot, a lot of Monogatari fans were kind of like questioning this decision because Monogatari has a um, uh, habit of letting the voice actors sing the OPs, and right. if Yosobi is doing this song as an OP, which it really sounds like it's going to be an OP, um, see, people were kind of poo pooing that. I'm like. But Yoasobi can't really miss. And Yoasobi doing a Monogatari OP seems like a fucking win for the franchise. Yeah, but like at the same time, um it just seems like you know tradition, right? Like uh, yeah. There's nothing there's nothing saying that one of the voice actors couldn't be doing a duet with Yoasobi. That's true, but also like, you know, when I think back to like Platinum Disco or um Oh my god. Say uh, no. Uh, Renai Circulation. Renai Circulation, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there definitely is a tradition of that in the Monogatari series, although it wouldn't be the first time that they've had someone else do an OP that isn't one of the the voice actors. Um, there's not really a whole lot else that's been released yet. I mean, this is coming out uh, starting July 6th. Um but one thing I found that was interesting is this is listed on both Annie Chart and on Mal as a um, ONA slash OVA. So huh. I'm wondering if this isn't going to air on television and it's just going to be a streaming anime only. I don't know. That would be a choice. <laughs> Very weird choice. But um, And it hasn't been announced yet where this is airing. Um, I have to believe that Crunchyroll would pick this up since they have everything else except for three episodes of Pokemon Agatari for no real reason. Um, but yeah, there's just not a whole lot that's been uh, put out about this except it is going to be an adaptation of what we have left of the Monogatari series. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, John. All right. Uh, speaking of things that no one really knows why it's happening and no one really has someone so people were asking for it for the last like 13 years but no one no one threw, saw this coming but uh community totoke third season's coming out um also an ona uh, i believe netflix has picked this up according mm. to the trailer it's it gonna be on netflix which is uh, a shame yep why does netflix choose to pick up shows that are like season twos or threes of shows they don't have. <laughs> what the heck? I wonder if they also may have picked up the first two seasons and they're going to drop all three seasons at the same time. Maybe, but like Crunchyroll had the first two seasons first. I don't, I don't know if Crunchyroll is going to let go. Let me Bro, see if Crunchyroll even like, still has it. Teasing like... Master Takagi-san is each of the three seasons is on three different streaming platforms exclusively. It's actually insane. Yeah, Kimi Totoke, the first two seasons are on Crunchyroll. So like, I, I hope Crunchyroll also has streaming rights to the third season. But according to the trailer, it says Netflix. So. Like, it's going to be streaming on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, so maybe that's why it's an ONA. It's going to only be on uh, Netflix. But yes, uh, third season of From Me to You. Uh, it's been 13 years. The last season came out when I graduated high school. And the manga 2011. finished up. 2011. Wow. When did the manga finished up in 2017. So it's been seven years since the manga ended. So... At that point, I was like, okay, if they're not going to announce it in, like, 2017, 2018, I was not hopeful for a third season ever coming out. 
I have zero idea why they're doing a third season. Like it's going to be done by production IG, who are is the uh, studio that has done the first two seasons. Um, there's no episode count yet because the first se- uh, season is like 24 episodes. The second season is like 12. Uh, and basically where the third season is going to start off is like, so it ends off season two, like the confession happens. So now season three is like after the confession. And it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but it's kind of, I, I hope it's a full adaptation. Cause I'm like, at this point, you know, production IG, you're doing it anyway. Like finish, finish <laughs> off. Can you don't need to okay. It's not that long. I think it's only like 120 chapters. So you think they maybe need one additional season past this to finish it off? Bro, if they turn this into 24 episodes, they could definitely finish off the entire series. Oh, okay. Basically what happens after the confession, like the confession is kind of the peak of Community Todoke. And I believe the confession happens around like chapter 80 or 90. So there's mm-hmm. only like 30 or 40 chapters left, if I recall correctly. I might not be. I mean, it's been a, it's been seven years since I read the manga, so I have zero idea. I haven't it's reread Community Todoke. <laughs> but I... I I do recommend this. Like, if you like shoujo manga, like, go watch um, or read Kimi Todoke from me to you. It's it's cute. Um, all the people who voice the characters are reprising their role, so everyone's coming back, which is pretty cool. Uh, Mamiko Noto as Sawako. God, Sawako so cute. I love her voice acting so much. Yeah, I've never watched the first two seasons of this, but people have always told me that it's it's a really good shoujo like anime oh it's very yeah, same sweet. it's I've very heard a lot of good sweet things. uh i love the facial like facial expressions, expressions. yes yeah. uh mm-hmm. facial expressions in the manga and stuff it's just so funny and cute <laughs> and you know i'm a sucker for shoujo manga so i'm i'm happy it's getting an adaptation even though it's oddly 13 years later and again <laughs> i i have zero idea why they're doing it it's not like there's a new manga or something I, maybe production IG has. A, I don't know if Japan has IP laws like we do in America, mm-hmm. where if you own an IP, you have to do something with it every so often, otherwise you lose the rights You'll to that IP. Mm, it could so, be. It could be. It, that's uh, that's kind of why like Spider Man existed for Sony. <laughs> They're like, look, if we don't make this movie, like we're gonna lose the rights to Spider Man back to Marvel, and we don't want that. It's our cash we, cow. We we need to it make a Spider. We need to make a Spider Man movie every seven years. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, no, that that is a real that's thing. Literally. So, uh, I know that copyright laws and stuff. They don't have copyright laws in Japan, so that I don't know if they have the same IP rights or if they do or don't. I have no idea, but yeah, uh. I mean, like I said, <laughs> came out of no one's field. really it. It's ranked really lowly because again, it's an O and A, so it's all the way down there. And I don't, it's, I hate things being exclusively shown on Netflix. Like, please, Netflix, stop that. Netflix has killed so many shows more so than they have helped grow shows because Netflix has like no discoverability. They never spend any money on advertising and marketing or anything like mm. that. Because anime makes such a small market of their share. Mm. So a lot of shows, a lot of good shows, go there to die. Um, to be fair, it isn't I'll just never, anime that they do this to. I'll never forgive them for what they did to JoJo. <laughs> Not just I, JoJo, like uh, Children of Wales. Um, I mean, lots of things, yes. But There's another one, JoJo. like something of Kyotoro. That one is a really good one. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I I hope Crunchyroll strikes a deal and gets it still out because I <laughs> I wanted to perform well and I want Production IG to finish the adaptation. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, the inner well, shoujo. Uh, yeah, you you <laughs> shoujo slut. <laughs> it's literally it's a top ten shoujo manga, like top ten read, dude. It's so good. God damn, high praise. It is All right. li- it is literally ranked like 150 in all of anime. Oh shit, that's overall. Really, that's yes, really on Mal. Good. It's a good fucking like show and manga. All, all right, right let me get to my yeah. Um Isekai uh Shikaku, uh also called No Longer Allowed in Another World. This is about a dude who gets into uh pulled into a world um uh, with cute girls by his side with video game powers every anime fan's dreams right but this guy a melancholic author hates that 
and he but and the thing he is, hates the trope of isekai so he's like nah <laughs> but he's here's the thing he was he got into this before video games were even made because he came from 1948 Oh, it's also a design. He's an actual like he's a, like a, was a real living person. Uh, I don't know about that, but like No, I do he... know about that. Osamu Desai was like an actual Japanese novelist. Oh, was he really? He's also a character in Bungo Stray Dogs. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. And he was quite um the Depresso Espresso boy. Cool. Sounds great. Um but yeah, so this guy from 1948 gets isekai into a video game world and he fucking hates it. And I'm just like, yo, this seems so fucking hilarious. Um, I mean, this if it's is just being... a meta show about hating like video game tropes, I'm down. Like, yeah, I love I'm meta down. Shows. This, sounds, this sounds hilarious. <laughs> uh, and the great part, like the especially great part, this is being directed by um, Shigeki uh, Kawai. The same director who did uh, Isekai Oji-san. So I'm no. just like, yo, like, I'm 110% watching this. And if that wasn't enough, it has fucking um, Hiro- uh, Hiroishi uh, Kamiya, you know, known for roles such Good as effort. Yato from Noragami or Izaya from Durara or... Araragi from Monogatari, you know, just 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 the average name voice actor. It was yeah, you, it was a good effort on his name. You fucked it up. It was a good effort. Oh, did I? Fuck. I'm sorry. Hiroshi Kamiya. What did I say? Hiroishi. Oh fuck. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit. Your buzzed. Nihongo is not Josu. I am a little bit buzzed. Okay. Yeah, like I guess it was a good effort. It was a good effort. I am sorry. What he said. And also, another person, Aoyuki. I'm just like, bro, what the fuck is this cast? <laughs> like, you got the director from, um, uh, fucking Sekai Oji-san, uh, Araragi. And we also have, ah, uh, 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 fucking can't speak right now. I'm sorry. Aoyuki. Aoyuki. Uh, Mau Mau, Tanya. Sorry, um, I'm watching the trailer. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The trailer for this is pretty funny. I I like this. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this yeah. on my list. I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> Do you sold? Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like in the trailer, it's like the girls, like you know, typical isekai or game, whatever. Um, typical trope of girl being trapped by tentacle monster, right? And the mm-hmm. dude goes up, is like, I can't reach you. All right, and just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> It's like fuck it. <laughs> like yeah, all right, you're going to die, I guess. <laughs> this is being uh made by uh Atlier uh Pondrak. It's weird I've name. Never for... heard of this studio. They made uh Isekai Oji-san. Oh. They're the one who made that. Yeah. So they really oh. they really do not have much under their belts. Um, oh my god. This is where this girl comes from. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah, Ganbare exactly. Doki-chan. I have seen... There's a place somewhere in Asia or something called Office Ladies. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's a meme on YouTube where it's, like, Office Ladies and it just, like, plays some song and it just shows, like, Office Ladies from anime. And there was one I didn't recognize. And I'm like, who is this... Off- are, are these Office Ladies that I'm looking at? Is this from, like, a Dojinshi or something? Like, I've never seen... Like, <laughs> that. They have, um... What's her face? The, the screaming panda girl. Um... They have her. They have the ladies from um Oh, from the Netflix show. Um the metal one, right? Yes. No, no, she's yes, a yes, raccoon. That one. Whatever. <laughs> uh they have a bunch of office ladies in this like YouTube poop short video. Or it's not a short, but it's a YouTube poop video. Uh, and this, I did not recognize these girls from here. I was like, I, I recognize every other office lady in here, like there was Sento from um that other show oh my god what was it called something wonderland no oh my god <laughs> Sento, the, the chick with the gun from her panties shoots what? the dude oh um uh 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 it was a freaking park. park um i'm a magi brilliant park i'm my i'm Maggie brilliant yes. park thank you a new park well, was in the I, title yeah i was like i needed just a part of the title then i'd remember it yeah so like that that's just funny 
So yeah, at least it's really, gonna look good. Uh, I mean, they really haven't done much work. Like they've made like two things, and that's it. This is gonna be their <laughs> third thing. So not a lot, but what they have done has been pretty good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this. Be- with the voice actors, a good director. I'm just like. Look, I'm here for the voice actors alone. The premise is pretty fucking hilarious, so I'm there for that as well. And I'm just like, this seems to be pretty promising. I'm hoping it will succeed. Yeah, and thankfully it's not picked up by Netflix, so it's not going to fucking die. Like, OG, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's got OG-san. Yeah. It will be on Crunchyroll. Well, to be a little bit fair... Isekai OG son, one of the reasons why it went down. Yeah, they caught so COVID. Because, like, everyone in the studio caught COVID and, like, they had to cancel production. Like, twice. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't twice. once, it was, like, twice. <laughs> like, they finished, like, two seasons later or something, or three. It was a ridiculous amount of time. Listen, for I don't forgive season. Netflix for a lot. The reason I, I do not have Netflix is because I do not forgive them for a lot of things. And I chose to vote <laughs> with my wallet. I'm a man. That means what he says. So I will stand on this side and, you know, yo ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, as, are you done? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. It'll be good. Please go watch it. I think it'll All be right, great. Good. Now, shut up, Chinoda, while I tell you about the actual anime of the year. Uh, I want to shut up. I'll be back because I got to Okay, well you fuck off then while I talk about actual peak anime that's coming out. Uh, plus size elf. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, bro, bro, look look how thick she is. And tell me that's not just yeah, oh. like oh. like freaking got a Fontano moment right now, like just freaking damn god. Boy. Damn she boy. Thick. Oh, damn, boy, she thick. Oh, uh, my God. I I read the manga for this. So when I saw that it was getting an anime adaptation, I laughed out loud. Because mm. I was just like, <laughs> yo, is Japan into fat chicks? Like, what's up? This I artist mean, definitely is into fat chicks. Uh, yes. The, the manga artist is 100% into some thick women. Oh, what? I didn't know it finished um, being published. Oh, the manga, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't finish reading. I This is one I picked up, then I kind of just dropped, uh, and mm. I just forgot to go back to it, just because it's like, it's the same joke every manga episode, uh, chapter of, like, an elf isekais into our world and wants to go back to her world, but she can't because the isekai portals have a weight limit. So, <laughs> so when this elf comes to our world, she discovers the power of of potatoes of french fries and can't stop eating fucking french fries so she gets fat um not really fat but like chubby so then mm. she tries to uh lose weight so she meets the main character guy who is i believe he works at a he's a massage therapist or something at a gym or whatever and basically like it's just she tries to lose weight and then she'll lose some weight and then be like i'll reward myself with some fries and then get <laughs> fat again bro i've been there <laughs> Bro, I am there. <laughs> yeah, there's like... <laughs> I don't want to say that this is like etchy, because it's not really etchy. Um, Bro, do we I, get some uh, tasteful shots, John? Uh, it's like... It's in the similar vein to like how many dumbbells... Or how many kilos are the dumbbells that you lift? Mm-hmm. Uh, of type of like... It's got some moments where it's like kind of lewd but it's not really like etchy. it's not etchy you know like actual etchy etchy like no actual tit shots and like freaking um random weird thigh shots mm. or like feet shots bro all i know is that there's 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 chubby elf there's chubby dark elf there's buff elf i it's got something for everyone man in the this word, has something for everybody in the words of a slime i love ilf I, okay, I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> Rumors that um, Elf I'd like to fuck. I mean... Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, we'll, we'll just pretend that joke landed um, <laughs> and move on. Um, look, John, I've never read this manga, but I see these character designs, and I see some potential for some really good fan art, and I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, really here for oh. it. 
I'm just saying, artists out there, if you want to draw the fat elf, please do. Bro, it's the year of the elf. Like they will. It really is. I mean, we had we had Freerin, we have Sylphie, we got this now. Wow, just straight up skipping over uh, Marceline. Marceline? Marceal. Marceal. And we got that too. I mean, I, it, there's a lot of elves out right now, man. <laughs> if you're an elf connoisseur, it is, this is definitely your year. It's a good I like year. to just make a point that uh, it's not a buff elf. She's like an oni, but... Oh, well, buff girl... But yes, there are, <laughs> there's a lot of representation of different female body types in the show that are very healthy. <laughs> in in different ways. Healthy in very different ways. <laughs> yeah, like, I I always assumed, because um, I know, like, it's, it's a funny manga, because in a lot of manga, when they draw thick girls, like fat chicks in manga, yeah. or in doujins and stuff like that, they aren't really fat like they've got itty bitty waist and stuff like that so it's kind of refreshing yeah. to have one that shows like realistic like sizes um well i guess it's if, funny if you can call that's a culture if you don't thing, look though, at their because... boobs if you don't look at their boobs then they're realistic sizes but True. um just in a country where they idolize like being small and petite and skinny as possible it's refreshing mm. you know it is um and it's, it's it's kind of a cultural thing too because like what the Japanese consider thick or fat is kind of considered average here in the states. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's true. Hell, in some places, what they would consider a fat is kind of skinny here. <laughs> um, Sadly, true. Well, like according to Japan, uh, Alex is fat. Me and you, Chinoda, we're like freaking obese, like monsters. We we shouldn't be allowed to exist. To be fair, to to the Japanese, I'm probably more like a kaiju than a person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> not not only is Chinoda kind of big, he's also big, tall. Chinoda, the type of guy that shows up and they freaking get inspired to make a new Baki character. Yeah, like for real. For real. <laughs> I can actually see Chinoda in Baki though. I can 100% see Chinoda as a Baki character. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, Chinoda, Chinoda type of person to turn around the corner and the Japanese go, Run! It's Godzilla! <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, Chinoda. No, no, this shit's great. Uh, but no, I, getting back to the actual show, I'm I'm super looking forward to this. It looks, I mean, not not only because like I like the character designs a lot, but because like it, it looks funny from the trailer, and uh, maybe the jokes do get old after a while. I don't know, but I'm I mean, check to it out. like, look, bro, I will the, watch the main character. Episodes. <laughs> the main character's name is Eru Fuda, elf. Her name is Elf. Uh, the black elf's name is Kuroeda. Black elf, bro. The elf <laughs> in Goblin Slayer is just named uh, the Archer Elf. The Oni girl, her name is Oga, because she's an ogre. <laughs> like, jeez, that's listen. bad. I yeah, I don't like, care. I'm, I'm gonna watch it. It's on High Dive, so that's cool. Uh, yeah. Studio anyway. Elias. It is the only freaking show they've ever made. What? Who is Studio Elias? Yeah, this is literally the only thing they have on their resume here. Oh, shit. First show. Okay. We shall watch your career with great interest. Please give us more fat chicks. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, moving on before I get canceled. John. Oh, sorry. I was watching the trailer for this. (laughs) John, no, Um... not the time. Well, I wanted to see, like, who's, st- like, because, you know, if you watch a trailer, if you watch a show, you can kind of tell, like, oh, I know this studio. I- I've i seen these b- brush strokes before. Like, I've seen these character designs before. Like, um, when I saw Dr. Stone's preview for the first time, I'm like, I've seen these designs before. <laughs> uh, Boku no Suma wa Kanjo Ganai. Uh, my wife has no emotion. Now, this is also ranked pretty lowly. Um, right now, it is not telling me who is going to be streaming it, so I don't think anyone's picked it up just yet. Uh, it is being done by Tezuka Productions, who they they it's, can do art pretty well. Um, it, 
it's a name that's very mixed. Like they can do really good work and they can do really shitty work. Yeah, like last season alone, they did really. <laughs> there were two shows I can I can think of that did really well, and all then two shows that did really poorly. Um, Goddess Cafe oh. Terrace, My Home oh, Hero, Ugh. Sundari Akayuku, and Under Ninja. Like Home Hero and Under Ninja, I believe performed very poorly. Um, the Goddess Cafe performed extremely well and is having a second season actually. Uh, to my they go do, much to my they, chagrin, <laughs> but then they go and do Dororo, which was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, so it's like yeah, hit or miss. And the Gashi Kashi season two, good Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, anyway, other than that, um, I read the manga for this. Like, like with everything else, every single episode for the last like seven years, <laughs> everything I talk about, I've I have read. I've either read the manga or read the novel. Light novel or web novel, depending on what it is. But um, I'm excited for this because I think it's a very cute story. It's about a guy. Uh, it's about a future where robots exist. And this guy falls in love with this robot. Her name is Mina. And that's her, like, Mina is, like, a robot series. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, there, there's, like, helper bot Minas. There's, like, they're kind of just, like, robots that help you around the house. But this dude was, like... Hey yo, I love this this chick. I'm gonna marry her, but it's hey, a John. robot that he owns. <laughs> John, what's up? Is is this a rip off Chobits? Chobits? No, it's way better than Chobits. Man, Chobits, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. That's Pensu. pretty old heads. <laughs> Pensu. Pensu. Uh, there's not any like lewd moments like in Chobits. Uh, it's it's more wholesome than that. So how okay. dare you put? <laughs> how dare you make a mockery of this manga? Hey, wow, you know cake. Chobits, though. That means you've watched it. <laughs> of course I know Chobits. Like, choo-choo, choo-choo, yeah, choo-choo, choo-choo, yeah. Let me be with, be with you. you. Such a good song. Anyway, uh, I think it's a cute story. Literally, it's about a guy who falls in love with a, with a robot. And now, like, in this He world, tries to treat her like his wife. One of but... us! One of us! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, like... This robot that he falls in love with is like, yeah, I'm just a robot, um, but I will be your wife because that's what you want, and I exist to make you happy. Mm. And it's like, she's still a robot, but she has, like, her own ways of, like, expressing affection and stuff, <laughs> and it's really funny. Uh, they also have a kid eventually. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, how? It's how? Not spoilers. Spoilers. Major it's spoilers. It's not a spoiler. It's right there in Mamoru. The kid's oh. name is right there in Mamoru. <laughs> Um, I have a, so I have a question about this then in this like world this setting right is it common for people to hook up with robots uh you meet different people who have robots and there are different people who do different things with their robots um Mina is just a type of robot she's a housekeeper robot there are mm -hmm. other types of robots as well that exist like a typical um sad story fashion i guess there's robots that exist to replace your dead children oh. there are robots that exist to replace your dead wife and so on and so forth and that's Damn, all i'm gonna really, say like, astro boy for real <laughs> uh that's all i'm gonna say for now because i think the story beats are really good like it's supposed to be fun and lighthearted, but it's got some serious moments and there are moments where i'm just like dude my fucking heart hurts like holy shit reminds me of i don't know if you guys remember this plastic memories Plastic, it's not as sad as Plastic Memories, which every episode was just like, hey, do you have emotion? Like, yeah, like, good. Like, and then they start beating the shit out of your fucking heart. It's not oh, like that. where your dick is? Let's punch it repeatedly. <laughs> oh, God. Plastic Memories is so tough to watch. I'm just, I'm just curious because, like, I wanted to know if it was a story where this dude is, like, ostracized or something or doing something that's, like, not a societal norm. Because um, like, that could be a very different type of story. Yes and no. So it's normal to use the robots for their intended purposes. Like a housekeeper robot is a housekeeper. Caretaker robot is a caretaker. Yeah. Uh, replacement Nanny child bot. robot is a, is a... Yeah, like that. So, But getting married to one is seen as weird by the world. Um, okay. And some people don't understand. Like, why would you marry a robot? Like, there's... What's wrong with you? And it's like, I don't know. I, I fell in love with her. 
I feel like I feel like in our real world, if that started happening, that would be the reaction. Oh, it's absolutely, one hundred percent. Like brother, ooh, go out and touch grass. <laughs> I mean, there are people who have fucking married roller coasters and shit, and so there's people who fall for PNGs. Like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Alex, you should know all We'd too be making... well. Excuse ooh. me, excuse me, I am not. A Genshin Impact fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you're is right, one right. Genshin oh. Impact fan on this podcast right now, and it is not me. I would say I'm a I'm fan. Sorry. Yours are, what do they call it? VTubers? Huh? Oh, fuck you. Those are real people. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think that my wife has no emotion. It is going to be cute. I really hope Crunchyroll picks it up because I hate going to other, like, as much as I hate Crunchyroll's player, it works the best out of all of the other ones. It's not <laughs> I have, great. I have issues with, like, High Dive. I have issues with, um, actually, watching on Amazon isn't too tough. I actually kind of like Amazon. Other than the ads, the ads fucking suck. Like, I pay for this. Come on, don't give me ads. Yeah. But anyway. Um, Daddy Bezos got to eat. <laughs> Yeah, he's got to buy like 13 more yachts, man. He's suffering. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a very good watch. I can't wait to watch it myself. I All right. I like the manga. <laughs> I might check this out. I might check this out. I'll check it out. Um, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So uh, that's it for our in-depth portion. So let's get into our uh, rapid fire round. I will start. With the second season of Nier Automata. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by the first season of this anime. I was genuinely like, curious and uh, concerned with how they would take the story of Nier Automata in particular and translate it into a very linear medium like an anime. Because it's did a it. story route game. It's yeah, it's a story route game and it's it's really meant to be experienced as like someone experiencing the story through the player. Okay, um, but like so one thing that Nier does is, like, sure, it has different routes, different endings. Like, there's 26, right? A through Z. Yeah. Um, but one thing that you don't notice about Nier is that the storyline is linear. It's got it certain actions that happen that have to happen. Now, the yeah. interesting about playing Nier Automata is that uh, the way that you experience those routes is different. Because there are some routes that you may never see that you don't get in your playthrough. Because you didn't decide to do what um, Jackass told you to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, but, of course, there are some joke endings, too. Um, for the most part, though, like, the main story remains unchanged. Like, what happens to Pascal happens to Pascal. <laughs> Adam and Eve are always going to be Adam and Eve. Like, those things exist forever. Now there are a lot of side story things that are super cool, like the king, the yeah. king being born that the um all those robots are waiting for and stuff like that, like learning mm -hmm. all that stuff, learning about um what's her name, one A, two A, whatever, uh, A two, A two, A two, yeah, uh yeah, learning about A two and all this other stuff. So there, there's a lot more interesting things in near that you have to kind of go and explore. There's also like the guy um that train guy that you can like attack to stop so you can talk to him. Who appears in apparently all the other like dragon dragon oh, guard uh, games uh, emil emil yes there's yes. apparently so i this is my near automata is like my first near game i've never played dragon guard or anything like that or any yeah. of the other like games so i i have no idea like about the background for a lot of this stuff apparently there's a giant universe of things and like um oh there is and yoko taro is constantly adding new shit to it every time there's a collaboration with near he adds new official lore yeah, which so, I find to um, be absolutely insane, but so cool. I mean, I I didn't finish the first season just because like there was that production delay and I forgot all about it. Yeah, uh, I think I'm. That's I another one like, that had a massive production delay. Like um, it was from the same season of uh, Isekai Oji Sun, if I remember right. I was it. I I don't remember that, but I do know it was for the same reason. Like three quarters of the team working on it caught COVID at the same time. Yeah, and uh, one thing I, you know, I, I praise the near like it, it looks good. Um, mm -hmm. The soundtrack is literally the video game soundtrack. They couldn't get any better, so they just reused it. Which I'm like, I'm they, fine with they that. They realized that they couldn't improve on perfection. <laughs> uh, I did like how they framed certain story elements, like when you go to the play and you see the, like the play about the, the king and the queen or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I remember this boss fight. <laughs> I remember this part. This is cool. I so, love yeah. the uh, the puppet thing at the end of every episode too. Yeah, so it's like it's cool. 
I don't mind yeah. it. I should probably go finish it though. It's it's oh, definitely worth your time. It's it's in my mind, at least from what I've seen so far. Of course, I haven't seen the second season. I think it's the best anime adaptation of a video game I've ever seen so far. I don't know. Arcane's pretty good. <clears throat> it's that it's not really a Japanese anime though. No, it's Korean, but no, it's French. Is it? Arcane is made by Fortiche, which is a French animation oh company. Oh my god, I thought it was a Korean studio. Okay. No, Never it's mind. French. <laughs> it's French technically. The <laughs> French um, anime. If I remember right, G Kids or whatever picked up the rights to it today. Uh for Nier? As of no no no, no, no for, uh, for oh, Arcane. For Arcane. Oh, oh, okay. You're talking about they picked up they picked up the home distribution rights, like the the home video distribution rights to Arcane. I mean, that's just home home video. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Netflix a, is not going to give her their cash yeah, it, cow it's still, called it's, Arcane. It's still a Netflix. <laughs> it's still a Netflix original. But since Netflix had no intention of ever putting out a home video, G Kids like, hey, we'll do it. Well, yeah, they Which played that them. market. They played that market one time. It was in fact how they started their market as a competitor yeah. to Blockbuster. All right. Uh, so moving also, on. Also, I uh, was completely wrong. Uh, Oji Sun and Nier are different times. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. Moving on. Uh, John. Um, the general and the something princess. I don't actually the remember. Magical girl and the evil lieutenant used to be arch enemies. <laughs> okay. The magical girl and the evil lieutenant used to be arch enemies. Um, I don't know anything about this other than uh, it, it's it's shojo. Uh, okay. and that's all I needed. <laughs> okay that's it the manga apparently got canceled uh but apparently it was pretty popular so oh. kind of weird that it got an anime yeah you don't see I that wonder... very often a manga or a light novel series gets canceled and it's like you know what let's make an anime <laughs> yeah it doesn't happen know. often all right now, i know that uh, there are a couple of series that get axed because like the creator just couldn't meet deadlines so it gets axed because of that there's been a couple of like that there's also like certain people who create series that their series just gets axed because they they just don't i forgot who it was there's a certain anime creator that's like basically every single manga they've ever written always gets axed and this is the first one that they've written that hasn't gotten axed yet and it has an anime <laughs> Holy and um, then there's just some creators who get caught inviting 12 year old girls to come spend the night with them and it's it's oh, great it's great God. when that happens what? it was the what dude who did roni kenshin oh I thought he didn't he have a 14 year old in his house or something at the yeah, time. Yeah, he's like of, inviting like, 12, 13, 14 year olds Jesus. into his fucking house to stay with him, and they were there. It's like this man has been a a monument <sighs> in our a pillar in the in the in our neighborhood. Give him a thirty thousand dollar fine, slap him on the wrist. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would it play out any differently if it was here in America? As long as you got Probably money and not. power, does it really matter? Like, no. Probably not. All right, uh, moving on from that depressing stuff, uh, Chinoda. You made it depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I'm all, I, did. I was here talking about, hey, this is a pretty, it looks pretty cute. I like it. I don't care. It's shoujo. Who cares? All all right, right, I just moved right, to right. touching kids. <laughs> As you always do. A Alex. suspicious there, Alex. <laughs> a lowly con and you want to talk about touching children? Hmm? No. You got okay, something to tell us? Let's, couldn't be me. Let's not, <laughs> couldn't let's be not me. cancel oh Alex my God. right now. Uh I love sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Uh, stereotypical rom com, white hair waifu. Uh, Don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's probably basic as shit. I'll give it a couple episodes. Just seems cute. It looks it's like it's a by... teasing, a teasing type of anime. It it kind of does. It's not, but it kind of is. It weird. Um, I will say done by Doka Kobo, so it probably will look good if nothing else. Yeah. PV I see a harm of girls. I don't care. Moving yeah, on. Yeah, I, I kind of don't care That's either. Every <laughs> fucking anime nowadays. Get over it. All right, Listen. now let's talk about. It's another... obviously about Alia. He's gonna choose Alia. Like, what? What's the it's point? In the in an... It's in the title. It's in the title. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about another peak anime that's coming out. Shiko no ko no ko no ko kosh tan tan. <laughs> gotta is, do All right, the... so no this no is so weird. I, I saw. Rot. I it's saw an, actual a, an ad for this. Like the, I saw the trailer before I even knew what this was. And I was like, so there's apparently an anime coming out about a deer girl. And then later, you know, today when we were looking through the list, I'm like, what? Studio Wit's doing this? Like, what? 
this is That's the other wild. Studio Wit Witt is doing. And let me tell you something. The the trailer for this is fucking wild. There is some god-awful CG. There is just unbelievably, like, batshit crazy dialogue. There's animation that seems like it's unfinished. I'm so looking forward I'm, to this. Honestly, this so honestly I'm going to say, this anime is probably what Studio Wit's going to use to carry them through the season. Like, it's not going to be their actual one that people are hyped for. It's going to be this one. It's not going to be Sakai Suicide Squad. It's going to no, be this. No, it's not going to be Suicide Squad. That's going to be trash. But this will carry them. This it's will the carry them show. through the budget. It's the meme show of the season. Bro, this is going to be anime of the year. I don't know what you're talking about. This is 100% going to be in the anime of the year. Bro, it's Damn, already got a okay. meme dance associated with it. Not only does it have a meme dance associated with it, one of the characters is literally just named Meme. No way. Meme? Really? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Her name is Meme, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Listen, I, I'm here for this. It looks like it's just a batshit crazy absurdist comedy. And as we learn from... Listen to me and John talk about smiling friends. I'm all here for that shit. I, I mean, I'm here for it. It looks stupid. I, I'll watch it. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm just, I'm just marveling at the, the crazy art. <laughs> Do you boys listen to the song every night, one hour straight before you go to sleep? Bro, that is now my new. Th that that song is now my sleep paralysis demon. It follows me everywhere. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on. Um, speaking of Isekai trash, Failure Frame is trash. It sucks. I don't know why it got an anime. Uh, it's a revenge story. Dude gets Isekai'd. Him and his class get Isekai'd into a world. Uh, much like Ari Ferretta and all those other ones. It turns out, though, his skill is trash. So then the goddess but is like, not. yeah, you're trash. I'm going to throw you in this dungeon. Uh, turns out he can use his trash skills to actually kill high-level monsters. And he's like, I'm going to go fucking kill that goddess. So that's the story. That's it. It's trash. It's it's about a guy who who wants to go fuck up a goddess. Uh, that that's cool and all. The only thing I want to point out before we move on is there's apparently a character voiced by Holo, and take that for what you will. I don't remember if that's the anyway. goddess or not that he tries to kill. Vices Vices. That's the character she's portraying. She might be the goddess that he tries to kill. <laughs> Don't kill Holo. Anyway, uh, move on. Moving on. Uh, Chinoda. Yes. Um. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it? Oh no. Nope. Tower of God. Oh. Wait, Tower of God. That shouldn't be the next one. Is it the next one? Oh, I did this out. Yes, of it is. It's the. That's the next one on your list. Whoops. Sorry. Uh. Yeah. Tower. Tower shit. Uh. It's coming back for <laughs> season two. All right. I will say. <laughs> all right. Disclaimer. This is where Tower of God starts to kind of get good. Disclaimer. Bro, you can't do this shit. Come on. <laughs> Disclaimer. Uh, Rahel is a bitch. Fuck her. Uh, Tower of God is also like it's you know it's a manhwa, so you know typical a hundred chapters to, to for season zero to far, for it to start getting into the meat of things. Um, fortunately, season one was that the first like I don't know 60, 80 chapters or whatever the hell it was. Uh, I'm hoping that season two is going to be a lot better because it's where like, this is where bomb or oh, yeah, bam. 25th bam, bomb. Yeah. Bam, like, bomb. It's freaking roasted acorns or whatever the fuck his name is in Korean. I don't, <laughs> they have weird Jeez. names, bro. They have weird freaking names. I don't understand it. Anyway, uh, this is, I'm hoping this is where that it starts to get good. If I recall correctly, I did drop reading tower of God. I kind of dropped a lot of my manual that I read. Cause I'm just like, look. I gave you like 200 chapters and I'm still not that into it. So whatever, I'm dropping you, you know, same for God of high school gave you like a hundred and something chapters. And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of done. But anyway, okay. um, I, I'll probably give it a hate watch, but eh, I, I can't believe this is the same studio who did the garden of words. Like, how do you, how do you go there? Money. I mean, <laughs> money. Yeah. yeah. I like money, <laughs> money. This is the answer for everything. <laughs> I'll probably give this a good old hate watch. Okay. Well, you do that. Uh, John, your favorite anime is getting a second season. You know, I was originally never going to bring this up. Um, but I wanted to bring it up just to piss you off. <laughs> I don't I know. Remember. I, look at those ratings. Squirt, Tet, 
you guys, everyone who likes this show needs to learn to develop some fucking taste, all right? <laughs> Go read a fucking book for once in your life. Stop jacking off to internet porn, okay? Y'all need help. Y'all need Jesus, okay? Go find the Lord. Go find your local priester, pre priest, pastor, priestess, person. <laughs> priestor. Okay? Your priestor. All right? Just talk to God, man. Like, freaking... It's just haram. All right, D this shit is haram, brother. Ooh, brother. Ooh, like <laughs> I hate that. Go, it took listen, one... don't go to your priest. Just go find Haruhi. She'll sort you out. I promise. I hate that people like this show for no reason. Like the writing is terrible. The characters are fucking terrible. There's weird fucking fetishes abound in the show. Uh, it's trash, bro. Like, I, I don't who know how to like, make just for weebs. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I did a whole 30 minute breakdown of why I hate this fucking show. Go watch that. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, uh, I can't remember who it was I was listening to, but someone I was listening to once described this as like, like a prototype incel anime. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a prototype incel anime or not. All I know is this show fucking sucks. You can't just put <laughs> cute characters into an anime and expect it to sell well. Except, I guess I'm fucking wrong because there's a second season of this show, right? Like, who cares what yeah. I think? Yeah, clearly you're wrong. <laughs> clearly I'm fucking wrong. Like, look I'm at the score distribution now. on that. I'm curious now because we're looking on any chart. I gotta see what the ratings are for the first season. It's not even... It's like just slightly above average. John's I mean, just shaking his head. He has no words. John has no words. Listen, I think that score distribution is, let's see, that's 10, that's 9, that's 8. A lot of people gave it a 7. I think they're being extremely generous here. Uh, the show is more like a fucking 3 or a 2 or a 4 out of 5, uh, like a uh, 10. <laughs> like, it's not I good. Know. It's... I can't even That's call it middling. Like... It's just bad. Like, I can give it credit for, basically, it looks pretty. And the voice acting is pretty decent. But to me, I'm that's just... the bare minimum of, like, if you, you know, like I said, if you don't have a riveting story, at least make it look good. Uh, so they've got that going for it. But the mm -hmm. story itself sucks so much that it's, like, negative score to me. <laughs> I um, honestly can't argue with you on that. It's true. It really I, is. Before I move on, I just want to say this is just yet more evidence I can put out there. This has a season two, and No Game No Life still has none. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with you Japanese people, but get it together, please. Like, you know, like, good for Tezuka, you know, get that bag, but fuck, man, I hate this show. Yeah. It's, and it's I'm, good. look at that score distribution. Like, obviously the people who are voting on this right now are people who liked the show enough to want a second Come season. Come back for so. a second season, yeah. Yeah, it's like now we're screaming i'm screaming into the void now because the only people around to watch who are excited for season two are the people who like season one right yeah i will definitely not be checking out season two because i don't hate myself all right i well, hate john, myself you are we watching it john, well, john jesus john you are up next all right um i'm waiting for you to why, pull up the tab oh why does no this... one remember my world or some shit okay um so Full disclosure, I've only read the manga for this. I have not read the light novel for this. Which is what the anime is sourced on. The anime is going to be sourced on the light novel. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's about a dude who is part of this world where they remember this hero named Sid, but no one knows who, knows who he is, but he stopped the war between, like, there's, like, different races, like the, um, the f elementalists, the elves and the angels or whatever. I don't... There's different factions, basically, in the world, like demons angels and um i think they're called animalists or elementalists basically like elves and beast people right uh and humans so there's four different factions and this guy named sid uh basically is a hero that kind of just like um saved the world and locked away the other races and then all of a sudden, as they're like, as humanity's patrolling and being like, oh, we got to be on the lookout in case any of these other warring races come out and try to kill us all, um, something happens and like history gets rewritten and Sid doesn't exist anymore. So it's like some someone somewhere pulled some fuckery. Um, I think that the manga is 
very pretty to look at. Holy shit, is there a lot of text to read? <laughs> it is oh. wordy. Yeah, uh, and is the story it like is like Monogatari levels of wordy. <laughs> it's like, look, this frame is like a third fucking just paragraph. Like a third of this frame in this panel is just a paragraph of text. Jesus. Is this? Well, hold on. Is there? Because I remember recently. I don't know if it was recently. Like within the last year or so, I remember there someone posted like a screenshot of a page from a manga, and like nearly like sixty to sixty five percent of the page is just speech bubbles. Uh, I'm not sure if it's this one that that post is from. You, I'd have to look at it. But mm. like I said, at least it looks pretty. That's all I can really say about it. The story itself is like a little bit interesting. It's not too interesting in my opinion. Um, studio Does it project do number nine. Different. I mean, other than the fact that like there's heroes versus angels versus demons versus like the elementals or whatever. That looks pretty. <laughs> uh, so World you... War, got it. <laughs> sure. Um, is that yeah. it, John? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna check it out just because I do. I did read the manga. Uh, I wouldn't say I'd, I'd like the manga that much, but like I said, if the if the anime is produced well enough, it'll make it better. Because I, I feel like it has something there, at least for the story. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the animation and the voice acting help, and the sound design and stuff help carry the show for me. Okay, uh, Chinoda, you were up next. All right. All right, we have, um, what's it called? Too, Too Many, many Loser heroines. heroines. Uh, the TLDR of it is, is it, it's, it's a rom-com, uh, and there is a main cast of characters, and three of them are, uh, chicks who are all the main, uh, female, uh, character. And one of them is a brown tomboy. She wins. Nah, bro. You're she lying. Wins. I see. I see who's winning. I see Anna's gonna win because she's a main. No, fuck. Lemon is a supporting character, bro. No, she's not. You, no, she's John, not. John, you say that. What? John, you say that. She's got blue hair, and we all know the characters of blue hair never. Yeah, win. bro. Look, look, read yeah, it. It's right at, there in front at, of your eyes. Look, look at look Mal. At, look at Mal. She's listed as a main character, bro. Fuck Annie her, List this. is lying, bro. Like it's right. Annie They're supporting, has... bro. Just she's saying. not. She's not supporting. No. So uh, I mean, the whole thing. Her name is Lemon. Is... <laughs> her name is fucking. She's named after a citrus. I mean, she's cute like that. That's why she. Uh, she's yeah, like, named Lemon. Also, she's she's like has four bow ties. What the fuck? You only need one. Bro, she's cute. Why are you fighting? Why are you fighting against this? I mean, I but shouldn't no, be um... a tomboy. I love tomboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a brown tomboy at that. Like, bro, that's literally written for you. Um, no, the whole thing is like there's three uh main chicks and like one guy. Stereotypical rom com, it's a formula. You're into this or you're not. Not okay. much else to say about it. I'm watching see... it. I'm watch it. It looks good. And it's done by A one. They... Thankfully, um, just like that other shitty uh anime that came out, Kami Erebe, they have color-coded the characters for me, so I can recognize blue, green, pink, orange, and yellow. <laughs> Wait a minute, they all have Makes fucking four bow ties. What the actual fuck? It's the bow tie. And he has a necktie. I don't understand. Yeah, but look, they color-coded them. See? They did color-code them, which is very nice of them to do. So when we inevitably shit on this, we can just say blue, green, red. <laughs> All right, uh, I am up next. Senpai wa otokonoko. My senpai is a cross-dresser. <laughs> Let's go. That's all I got to say. I'm here for it. Bro is is, is a femboy, and uh, main girl wants to, uh, well, not wants to, does confess. And then, because she thinks she's confessing to a girl. And it's like, no, I do not have. <laughs> I do not have the equipment down there you think I have. And she's like, oh, I wonder if I can love him anyway. That's it. That's I mean, I wonder, I wonder how much Twitter is going to love this. <laughs> well, you're, you're missing the other part where it's like a love triangle unfolds when uh, Ryuji realizes that he might also have some feelings for his old friend. So it's like, oh, 
Oh, <laughs> like there's a, this is like a the, the gayest of love triangles. Like she's like you thought it was Yuri, but it might be um Yow. Yaoi. Like oh, oh, so that's a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, I just hope it's not problematic in the sense that uh some other cross dressing manga are problematic. I will say, just judging by the trailer alone, like they, it seems like they're playing this like completely straight. They're not making a joke out of it. Um, so that's nice to see if if that is in fact the case. Um, because like you're right, there's a lot of of stuff that deals with uh, material like this that just treats it like a straight up joke. Not John. That it's I also, disagree. Um, no, you don't even know what you're disagreeing to, bro. You no, disagree on, on, that I think that it's problematic that uh, people depict gay relationships as, like, super sexual and rapey? Like, you, you think that's... You're disagreeing with that, that that's problematic. No, no, bro. I'm disagreeing with you on the fact that I want Twitter to be angry because it's entertaining. I didn't say that. Yes, I did. <laughs> what are you, You're I... disagreeing with your fucking self! <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that... Um, <laughs> There was another cross-dressing anime that I remember watching where it was problematic because, dude, I don't fucking remember. There was a character that basically cross-dressed and he kisses this girl without consent, and basically she like the whole like, oh, I'm I'm so into you, but I like to cross-dress, but I'm also like, I also fuck dudes, and it's just like, this is kind of creepy, bro. Like, consent is sexy, consent consent is good. Okay, consent it's consexy. That's, That's what I'm saying. Terrible. I'm so I'm so sorry. That was terrible. like one of the reasons why like this season I like to Daimo Okairi so much is because um yes it's a homosexual relationship but they don't have any of the problematic things that I have with um a lot of BL and Yaoi which is like Except it's super Omega fucking bullshit. rapey. All like eighty percent of it is all super rapey. And it's like bro what? <laughs> like I understand having fantasies of like getting you know hardcore sex and whatnot but like I don't that's know, what hentai is like, for. That's what, yeah, that's what porn is for, dude. Like, go go watch porn. Go live your perverted fantasies in porn land. Yeah. But I will say, just like I said, judging from the trailer alone, um, it does seem like they're playing the straight and not as a joke, or it doesn't seem like it's being done in a super perverted sense. That's so, a positive sign. If if that is in fact the case, I I and I hope it is the case. I kind of look forward to watching this because I'd like to see something like this played straight for what. Pardon the pun, but like not. <laughs> like, played... I don't know. I'm not sure how straight you think this is, bro. <laughs> like I think my dude goes both ways. <laughs> well, one of them certainly seems to. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of looking forward to at least checking this out. I, I don't know how good it'll be, but, yeah, whatever. Um, who is next? John. Uh, I parry everything. It's about a guy. <laughs> he parries everything. Parry this, you fucking casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like a, I believe he's a mercenary? I think? The main character is a mercenary. I read the manga. I've never read the light novel, and I believe it's going to be based on the light novel. Yes, it's going to be based on the light novel. But basically, there's this guy. I think he's like a mercenary or something, or a soldier, ex-soldier. Uh, but he can't fight, but he's like the number one parry. So, like, I can't fuck you up unless you attack me. <laughs> mm. He meets this, like, princess or whatever. And she's just like, hey, you're a strong fighter. Be my bodyguard and teach me how to fight. And he's like, yeah, I don't know about that, bro. That's it. Is, That's... is is there a reason that every time Perry is mentioned, it's in brackets? I had no idea. <laughs> no like it's idea. even mentioned in brackets in the description in the in the synopsis. It's probably some like, skill or something. I don't know, man. Skill check, yeah. Uh, I maybe. It's you anyway. know I I like the manga. It's about fighting. <laughs> it's fighting. So who cares? Okay. Um, Chinoda. Uh, this shit. Uh, nobody's way up to an exploration hero level. Um, typical high schooler adventurer, um, uh, spends his day exploring dungeons and all that, finds a item that can summon mythical beings. 
I don't give a shit about any of this except for the fact that the female main character is being voiced by Kana Hanazawa. So that that's literally all I'm there for. I'll be and honest. her name is Sylphie. And her name is Sylphie. And we have yet another fucking same face, black haired protagonist. All you I fuckers. can say is I am I wouldn't say I'm a the lord of Isekai trash, but if it's isekai trash that even I've never heard of or wanted to pick up, it's probably not that great. <laughs> like, it's probably got no redeeming qualities to it. Um, it's probably not. Now, here's a like one maybe, maybe possible good thing about it. It's being done by Gecko, uh, who did, um, what's it called? Grandpa and Grandma Turn Young Again. Oh. And that's pretty damn good. So, Oh, God, they did Temple. Yeah, they did. Oh, God, no. I don't. Why? I didn't watch that, so I don't know. Don't, you don't it's have trash. to. You don't have to. Don't don't worry about it. Just go watch actual porn. Yeah. <laughs> you have a better time watching actual porn. No, watching, I like teasing. That's what gets me off. Then if that's what you want, go watch Takagi-san or uh, fucking uh, Alex, uh, they're Nagatoro. underage. I'm saying there's better etchy like, anime out there. Okay. But, I mean, they have done something actually good, though, that we're both watching, so. Yeah, but that's because the source material is good, you know? Like, <laughs> if would, the source I'll... is good, I can't really give too much credit to the animation studio for, like, making the story better. Like, it, you didn't make the story no, better, but, you like, were able to make it shine. Good. Yeah, it looks yeah, good, yeah. I'll say that. So, okay. some hope, we'll see how it goes. Kanahan and Izawa, that's literally the only reason I'll check out even an episode of this. Fair enough. All right. Um, my last one I want to talk about is VTuber Legend. How I went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream. Uh -huh. um, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me this VTuber didn't get a three-day Twitch ban? No, she didn't. <laughs> uh, in fact, so I guess the, the synopsis of the story is that uh, VTuber is part of a large VTuber agency, supposedly Japan's top VTuber agency. It's, it's not called Whole Alive for some reason. <laughs> um, but um, she's kind of waning in viewership and popularity. And one night she accidentally forgets to turn off her stream and she reverts to like her actual self. Um instead of the character she's playing as a VTuber, and everyone fucking loves it. Because she's crass, she's, like, half drunk, um, she shits on things, instead of being, like, the nice goody-two-shoes girl. And, like, that's how, that she then adopts I mean, that as her persona. That happens in real VTubing life, like... It does. When, like, when we look at the early generations of Hollow Life Girls, for example, there are a lot of them that try to be as say-so as possible because Cover was, you know, recruiting these girls essentially to be, like, idols. So they're trying to be say-so as possible and, like, as safe as possible. And then they f eventually find their own niche of, like, how much they can blend their personality with how, uh, their character's personality with, like, who they are as a character, like an actual person. To find a good like middle ground of like this is kind of who really i am but also like not fully who i am because you know you still got to be an idol you still work for cover so it's well like, sometimes it's... sometimes you're just fucking kiara and sencho and you don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> um i i mean the premise is fine i don't have a problem with that i also just don't care about vtubing anime question mark fair, like fair enough i will say one thing they could I, have done they had an opportunity to do it here is get actual vtubers to do the voices that would be great and hilarious but there's also a bunch of problems with that there are um because the whole like crediting licensing issues and like working under a pseudonym and stuff like that like they cover Way tries really hard to headache. well cover tries really hard to make sure the girls don't get doxxed um especially after the whole like um was it is it Suisei or Chocolate Sensei? One of the girls uh, that was getting stalked by one of the managers at um, Cover in the early days. Oh, um, it was. I think it was Suisei. I don't remember who it was, but yeah, like they they don't want that happening ever ever again because mm. you know it's a fucking HR nightmare for one thing, and also like the fans would never forgive a production company for harming their Oshi. 
I would yeah. never forgive a production company for harming my <laughs> Oshi, to be honest. Bro, if, like, <laughs> if he finds out if he finds out that someone at cover like actually physically or mentally or whatever harms we say, dude would turn into fucking Liam Neeson and Taken. <laughs> like, dude, I have a particular set of skills and you are about to get fucked up. Listen, I love Suisei. I love uh Yeah, I know, you're flying you're flying to LA to see her. I'm listen. I love Suisei. I also love Corone. I would have flown out for Corone too. Pekora and uh, and Goomba, like I don't really give two shits about them. Like, yeah, whatever. They're they're funny. They're all right. You know, I don't mind them. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. Uh, no, I'm I'm just a little tired of the whole like. So there's a whole bunch of media that's like girl forgets to turn off her stream and does whatever, right? Like, there's this whole e girl category of porn nowadays, and I'm just like kind of sick and tired of people playing on that trope yeah because it's I like mean, it's, i get it's something it that, like something you want to streamers... get part of amaranth's market right i get that you yeah. want to be part of that net worth of like how much does she freaking make like 50 million a year or whatever it's an insane amount she makes like 50 million a year or something so it's like i get that you want a chunk of this change right yeah however i'm tired of it bro like learn do something new like come on there's there are better ways to get yeah. money from people than to like copy the same plain old stories and archetypes and tropes. Like, come on, at least it be is, creative. I mean, it's, it's worth pointing out that there are streamers, content creators that do stuff like the setup to this anime on purpose just for clout too. Like, yeah. oops, I forgot to turn off my stream. You saw my butt. Yeah, that's that's why I'm just like a little tired of it. Like, it's whatever. Yeah. So that's why it's to me. It's it's just a whatever story. Like, it's if it's good, it's good. You tell me yeah. like, hey, I like it. Like, yeah, maybe I'll check it out. Like, I like VTubing. The VTubers. To, to be fair, the the trailer portrays this as like a straight up comedy. So if they just go like total absurd comedy route, it could be really funny. Especially if they make fun of like um VTubing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I like I want them. Tropes. I want them to shit all over Nichi Sanji though. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, John, what's the last thing you want to talk about? Uh, the strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army was a human. Uh, this is also going to be based on a light novel. I have only read the manga. Uh, it's kind of interesting in the fact that... So basically, there's this guy, and he gets raised... He's a human, but he gets raised in the Demon Lord's army. And he's, like, the number one general, demon general. But he's a human, fighting against the humans. <laughs> Nice. So it's it's kind of just funny like that. Uh, but he, he's like a guy who wants like he wants peace. He doesn't want to actually like kill all the humans, but he does see that like the humans have. He basically wants a clean house. He's gonna drain the swamp. This is actually President Trump the anime. Actually, oh, God, <laughs> we're canceled. <laughs> no, we're not. We're going right wing extremists now. We oh, God, are. God <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just about a smart human who like has all these schemes and machinations in mind to try to like outplay the, like he he's gotten, he has less resources than like the other squads and stuff, but he's an efficient squad. It's like, if you took all of John wick and put him into one, like platoon of men, and then you went and defeated like an actual army. <laughs> that sounds cool as shit actually. Yeah. So, well, we drained the swamp. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think it'll be a fun watch. Like, if yeah, anything, it's entertaining. I, well, because it's not like an OPMC type of situation, right? It's it's kind of like Realist Kingdom, where your main character, his superpower is that he's smart, <laughs> um, and that he fights with his head. He doesn't actually fight with like his physical body. Like he doesn't just. So he's wrong. got a little bit of this going on. Yeah, and it's like it's not like all his plans go according to plan as well. Like there are fuck ups and stuff too that he'll do, but then it's like how he pivots and how he thinks, and it's more interesting that way to me. It's how I I found the manga interesting like that, uh, and I I you know I, I don't have anything else to say about the the anime other than like it looks fine. <laughs> I know a lot of people are gonna be turned off by this because it doesn't have like an OPMC steamrolling people. That's one thing about these like fantasy um, anime. Like if you don't, it's, yes, it's a trope and it's a, a dying out trope, but people like uh mary sue's and gary stews like that's just yeah that's media in a nutshell right well like, especially in fantasy 
Oh, like, you know, I mentioned John Wick earlier. Like, why do we like John Wick? Because he's John Wick. He's the fucking boogeyman. No, he's the guy you send to kill the fucking boogeyman. Baba Yaga. Oh. <laughs> that line goes so hard, bro. <laughs> it's so good. I also just want to point out before we move on, apparently this is originally created by a cat. What? It's just a cat. There's a cat down here, and it says original story. Huh. It's just, it's a cat. <laughs> All right. Well, it's um, you know, when people create stuff, they don't want to actually put their information online, so they'll put pictures of their pets or their sir. What are you talking characters. about? Yo, why are you disrespecting Cat Sensei like this? Come yeah, on, this John. cat <laughs> made a whole ass fucking light novel. Give the are you telling credit. me shrimp fried this rice? <laughs> <laughs> you know that um, do you guys know William Osmond? No, the YouTuber. I've heard the name before. Okay, do you know Michael Reeves? Nope. Yes, I do know Michael Reeves. Okay, well, science YouTubers, um, specifically Michael Reeves, his ex-roommate is William Osmond, also a science YouTuber, an engineer, actually. Uh, he created something called Open Sauce. It's a convention for basically nerds. Uh, mm -hmm. Adam Savage showed up last year, I believe. I believe last year was the first time they did Open Sauce. I believe they're doing Open Sauce this year as well. I think it's going to happen next week or something. Um or made or something. I don't, I don't actually remember when it is, but point is someone made an invention that held, that had a shrimp, an actual shrimp, live shrimp, fry rice. No fucking way. I shit you not. A shrimp has fried rice. <laughs> Man, popular. Most popular We're all fucked. Item. We are all I'm just fucked. saying. Shrimp are going to take so, all our jobs now. When I hear that joke of like, are you telling me a shrimp fried this rice? I'm like, you know, I have seen a, sh a shrimp fried rice. So maybe. <laughs> the possibility isn't zero anymore. No. But yeah, I, I love open sauce. I love the concept of like, hey, um, I liked making stuff, you know, as someone who also liked tinkering with things growing up and i still like tinkering with things now um i love the entire idea and concept of there's a convention for people who like to tinker with shit i'm like oh my god i'd love to go what a bunch of fucking nerds i love them all <laughs> it's hilarious shrimp fried rice bro <laughs> literally all right, all right. Well. chinoda you get to finish this off yay uh i'm actually looking forward to this one it's called dungeon people um woman who's looking for her father uh delved into this dungeon deeper than any other adventurer uh gets offered the job of being uh the dungeon caretaker and it actually looks cool it looks funny being done by OLM yeah um i'm actually looking forward to this bro why these character designs so cute oh and it's on high dive as well and it does look cute it looks super cute Okay, bro. I mean, why do these character designs so cute? Adventure, comedy, fantasy. Like, I I like those tags. Yeah, yeah. I I think I might check this out just just this by the the look of it. I mean, it genuinely seem like seems like be... a good time. I dive it has a couple like of shows that I want to watch this uh, next season. But Thank sure. God, because I haven't had anything this season on there. Yeah, me either on High Dive. Um, <laughs> mainly everything on Crunchyroll. Actually, yeah. every single thing I've I've been watching has been on Crunchyroll lately. High Dive was just like basically, um, freaking Shadow, the anime, um, Eminence and Shadow. Eminence and Shadow, thank you. And no, how the go. hell could you forget that bastard? I'm, just, I'm, uh, I'm tired. Alex, okay. see us out. I want to. Yes, hear. yes. All right, let me, let me, let me put us back here. All right, so yeah, that is it for um our our summer preview. Uh, before I do uh like sign us off here, I want to ask. What did you guys think of the the spring season overall? Well, spring season, I, I I mean, but generally, I liked the spring season. Um, I've been pleasantly surprised with a bunch of anime like Windbreaker and Tadaima Okairi. Uh, Kaiju really Marie. surprising that I've, I've I you know I knew nothing about Windbreaker or Tadaima Okairi, and I I'm really enjoying those two shows specifically. Mm. Um, for the shows that I was looking forward to watching, I'm also enjoying. I think they they've been pretty decent adaptations as well. I definitely feel like summer is not as strong as an impact on me Agreed. as compared to like winter or uh, spring has, yeah, and subsequently fall. Uh, so it's it's kind of a weak summer for me, but that's you know that's fine. 
hey, it's a good chance, especially if you don't end up picking up a lot of stuff to catch up on some stuff that you missed. So yeah, I can I... finally I can finally go watch freaking <laughs> uh, uh, near Automata. Finish that. Go watch the uh, Kotosuba finally. <laughs> Do it. Do it. So uh, Do it. I'm. Mostly in the same camp as uh, John. I have lots of things I've been enjoying in spring. I am, and I think summer isn't going to hit as hard. I, I think there are definitely going to be stuff I'm going to enjoy, but like, it, it's just not a, not going to be as impactful, which is fine, which is perfectly fine. But yeah, Konosuba this season, fucking peak. That's all I need. Not, and you know, it, it, it's worth pointing out that not every season has to have like, 15 things that you feel like you got to watch. It's okay to have seasons like this every once in a while. Seriously, I need I need a little break cuz I've been overloading myself. Yeah. All right. Well, uh all that being said, I do want to thank everyone for stopping by to watch us preview the upcoming summer season. Let us know down below what you are looking forward to this upcoming season, what uh you think we talked about that was uh like on your on your on your radar, um what you're definitely going to avoid with a 10-foot pole. Um also, uh, give us a like if you like what you saw. Subscribe if you want to see more because it really does help us out. You can also check down below where you can find links to all the stuff that Anime Club After Dark does, including our Discord server. Uh, you can definitely check that out. Um, we have a merch store link down there as well where you can help us out that way if you want. Um, with all that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Bye. I can finally eat. I know. Me too. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> None of us talked about the Terminator anime. I also didn't talk about... Um, there's another anime that I saw that was going to air that I kind of wanted to talk dun, about. Dun, dun, dun. There's right, a gay dun, one dun, dun, dun. that actually no, um, looks kind of good. No, freaking Rick and Morty the anime is going to air, apparently. Wait, oh, yeah! Way. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> Rick and Morty the anime, the actual anime, is going to air. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> 